Hey guys, so I kind of wanted to get a bit more into the lower level stuff in Groff that a lot of you guys probably haven't worked with too much, and one of them is colors. Now colors is one of the things that I feel like a lot of people don't know about Groff, and it can be a bit confusing if you haven't used it before. It's very powerful, and you can add a lot more glitz and glam to your documents using it. So let's get right into it. So I'm just going to create a file really quick. Let's do etmp.ms. All right, and this is just a empty file. So let's take a little, let's mix it up a bit. So let's just add some text. So here we have our file and the output. Now I just added a little lorem ipsum, which is basically just a randomly generated uh, collection of words. And we're just gonna work around with this and try out some new things. So the first thing I wanna show you is just how to define a new color. So we're gonna do dot def color, and then we're gonna give it a color. So let's just call it uh, very, very red, and we're gonna go RGB, and we're just gonna go one, zero, zero, and here I basically said uh, set green to zero, blue to zero, and red to one. So this is gonna be very red. And then that's all we're gonna do for that. Let's just add a little comment here for later reference. Actually, it's, it's not very necessary. So we've, de we've defined a color. Now what we can do is we can do dot, dot G color, for the um, for coloring glyphs, so letters and stuff like that. And we're gonna set it to very red. And we'll see that all of our text is red, which is pretty neat. So now we can end that by doing dot G color and just doing that. And that will just basically set the first little section that we have right here to red and then set it back to whatever the previous color was. So let's do that again here. So let's do dot very, oh, dot G color. And there we go, now we have one section where it's black again. So this is probably pretty useful already, but let's go a bit more into how we can define colors. So here, let's just make a hex value. Let me just go grab one really quick. So here is just a sort of bluish gray color that I found um, that we're gonna be using. So there we go. Now we've switched it from very red to being red. Now it's like this bluish color. So now let's try this again. And there you go. So you'll see that you can actually set the value to a hex color or like we had before to blue and we can use RGB. So there's two options there, which is pretty nice. And you guys, I'm sure, can see a lot of uh, opportunities here. Now, something I want to show off is that you can actually uh, disable color. So we can do dot color zero, and that disables all coloring. And then if we set it to one, we enable coloring. So this can be useful if, say, for example, you have a macro that colors something, but you don't want it to color it at one point. You can disable it if you need to. And some devices don't actually allow you to output color um, off the top of my head. I can't remember what they are, but it's usually for like some weird offshoot of different printers. But this is just so you know. So now another thing we can do is we can actually change this in line. So you'll see what I mean in just a sec. So we're going to delete this and this and this. Oh. Yeah. All right, so now we're back to normal. So now I just want to color this one word right here, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do backslash M. And then we're gonna give it our color, so very red. And then we're gonna put that in uh, square brackets. If it's shorter, you can use basically the same thing you can use in other parts. So two letters, uh, you can do, if it's just a one letter color, you can do M. But in this case, ours is multi letters. So we're gonna do backslash M, and we're just gonna do empty brackets, square brackets. And so basically this causes it to go and return to before. This is very similar to how fonts work. So now we just have ipsum as um, our bluish gray color. Now, really quickly, I just wanna go over, I'm not gonna go too deep into this because I haven't really covered this in another video. So I'll probably go into this a bit more later, but you can actually color, um, now you can draw symbols. Um, I'm not really gonna go into this, but in case you guys do know, you can actually use it. So in, uh, images and stuff like that. And this is kind of how PIC, the preprocessor works, is it actually generates these um, requests uh, to draw like different images. There's a lot of different ways to draw them. Hopefully I'll get to cover it in a video pretty soon because they are very helpful, but often I just end up resorting to PIC unless I have a very specific use case. But we can color these very easily by doing a backslash, so like before, but instead of an M, we're gonna do a capital M square brace, and then we're gonna do very red, and then backslash, oh, M, very red. And then when we run that again, you can just go like that, and we'll see that it colors it just like before, and the colors work just like I explained the first time, so one, zero, zero, 
and there we go, it's back to red. And you can use this same color for drawings and for uh, lines, which is really powerful. You can do a lot of really neat stuff with this. Now, one last thing that I don't want to forget to mention is that you guys can actually check the current value of what color you're using. So actually, let's turn this back into a string. All right, so right now we just have a little string saying the current color is, and then nothing. So in order to actually get it, we're going to do backslash n, and then we're going to go uh, dot m. All right, and so you can think of it as dot m to get the current color, because it's also done with an m. And there we go, and it prints it out just like that. And you can do the same thing with slash m. There's not really going to be a value for it, so it's not going to say anything. But let's just uh, do this anyways. And so there we go. Now it's printing out very red just because we have it inside of the capital M sections. Um, just to make this a bit more clear, let's actually just delete this. There we go. Now it should be a bit more clear. So even though this color isn't actually affecting anything, we can still read from it and figure out what its current value is. Anyways, guys, I'm going to sign off for now. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And make sure to subscribe if you guys are interested in more content on Groff. Thanks and goodbye.